200K, helping you make six figures in this industry, guys. Glad to have you on the call again for, again, the earning begins with the learning. So excited to have you on the call this morning. We'll jump right in to our training this morning because, hey, he's back. He's back. Yes, right. Yeah, he was on a trip going to break through and help people all over the world, but he's back and able to help us. Uh, uh, we missed him yesterday. So let's, let's get our pen and paper ready because ink, don't forget. And uh, you, the biggest, you know, uh, you don't got to understand that you got to be able to write these things down. Habakkuk says, write it down, write the vision, make it plain, and it will come to pass. To paraphrase it, it will come to pass. And even if it tries to stop, it's still going to come to pass. If you want to get just kind of my version of what it says, it can't be uh, denied, but it can be delayed. So write it down. Keep the vision in front of you. It's a paper and pencil. It's good to have this morning as we welcome our international global trainer, uh, Crown 3, to the call this morning, none other than the Breakthrough Specialist, Dr. Breakthrough. It's breakthrough time. Shark, shark. Shark, shark. It's a privilege and a pleasure, a treat and a treasure, a joy beyond measure to be here with the family. And as a matter of fact, I am now in Virginia area. And uh, my, my, what a great day to be alive. So I want you to text people. I want you to call people. I want you to get them on this call. I'm going to give you a new training that literally, I mean, opened my eyes to so much. Um, and I'm going to talk about are you a victim, are you a volunteer, or are you victorious? And this is going to apply not just to your life. It's going to apply to your business it's going to apply to your finances. It's going to apply to your spiritual life. It's going to apply to each and every area of your life. And so, my friend, if you want to build a big team and build it fast, uh, you're going to have to get the right type of people, but you're going to have to have the right type of mentality so you can be like a magnet to attract the right kind of people. And you're going to have to always be in what I call growth mode. Remember I said it before, and I'll say it now. And that is, is you've got to learn to grow through whatever you are going through so that you can get your breakthrough. So when you start growing through what you're going through, instead of griping and complaining, because I don't know about you, it's so easy to gripe and complain. It's easy, uh, but my friend, that doesn't help you to grow. And I don't know about you, my friend, the results of griping doesn't get you the growth. The results of growth get you to breakthrough. So that's breakthrough. And one of the things, by the way, if you're going to be a victim, I'm a victor, I'm just going to start off right now, but we've been going through the June declaration and so many of you have texted me and asked me to send it to you. So I trust you've been doing it yourself. Uh, but again, it's based on a powerful thought, Job 22, 28 says, thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon thy way. So, so when, you, when you step out and you declare and you say something, and especially when you recognize that where I'm going with this, what God made you to be, you can start declaring some things with authority, and the things will start coming in the past, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. And when you speak with authority and dominion, then doors start opening up, and God starts sending people into your arena, into your space, that can lead you to help accomplish the thing that you spoke and said. So I want you to declare this because, again, what I do throughout the day is I say what anything good that can happen will happen, and it will happen at the best possible time. This is Dr. Breakthrough's law that I constantly, constantly say to myself. So the June Declaration, I pray, declare, and decree, according to Job twenty-two twenty-eight, 28, that June is an incredibly blessed month. Every week of June is a blessed week for my family and I, and every day of June is a blessed day. I am walking in the strength of God during this month. I'm experiencing the peace, joy, freedom, and fullness of God. June is a month of great grace, great power, great favor, great wisdom, and great faith. I believe and receive miracles. I expect and experience financial breakthroughs during this month. June brings great health, wisdom, strength, and wealth. Because of the blood of Jesus, I am increasing in revelation knowledge and wisdom during this month. 
I hear the voice of God clearly and speak his word with power, clarity, and authority. I continually thank and praise my mighty God. No weapon that is formed against me can prosper. I am prospering. I am overcoming. And I am experiencing divine supernatural increase. Great health manifests itself during this month. New discoveries spring forth for me in this incredibly blessed month of June. My God is raising up powerful people in prominent places that will use their power, wealth, and influence to help me achieve his purpose in my life. I anticipate receiving this or more by the end of month the month of June or sooner. I ask this in Jesus' name, amen and amen. So I want everybody right now, we're going to take a deep breath, and the deep breath is symbolizing what I just read. You're, you're breathing it in. You're receiving it, taking it in deep. It's not just going to be on the surface. It's you're taking it in deep. So everybody with me, take a deep breath. Okay, let it out. All righty, all righty. So I trust you just received that. So question, are you a victim? Are you a volunteer? Or are you victorious? Now, I know which one everybody wants to be. And by the way, you will empower your team if you help them to understand these principles that I am constantly understanding and God's revealing. You know, one of the prayers I pray every day that changed my life and gave me one of the biggest breakthroughs recently, which, by the way, I pray daily for fresh breakthroughs, fresh bread, (laughs) fresh fire, fresh finances, and fresh oil. Uh, Those are the five main things that I'm praying and believing and trusting God for. But here's a prayer, and that is I thank you that today and every way and every day hereafter, you're continually giving me more wisdom, knowledge, understanding, favor, grace, and the wherewithal to empower those under my jurisdiction and beyond to experience breakthroughs that would please you, profit them, and cause my family and I to prosper. And I believe a result of that prayer and that commitment Uh, allows God to send me different thoughts and things that will empower you to get another breakthrough, but also for me to have more breakthroughs so that I can speak out of the overflow of the constant and continual breakthrough. So the question is, which do you choose? Do you choose to be a victim, volunteer, or victorious? See, a victim, watch this now. Here's the definition of a victim. A victim is a person harmed, injured, or killed as a result of a crime, accident, or other event or action. Did you get that? A victim is a person that that, that is injured, harmed, or killed as a result of a crime, accident, or other event or action. And so so obviously there are people on the line like myself that you have been a victim. That is, you've been done wrong. And, and we, again, we, 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 we never want to take away from that. We never want to not be sympathetic uh, with others. You know, it's pretty easy when – you know, someone else has gone through something to just say, trust God and things will be okay. Um, uh, and it's a totally different story when you're going through it. But many of us have been victims. We've been victims of crime. We've been victims of racism. We've been victims of someone's, uh, you know, maybe in a situation where uh, a car accident, whatever. But well, here's what I'm saying. 1 Corinthians 13, 11 says this, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. So so Paul said, man up, time to man up, or what we say here, shark up, right? Just just shark up. But, but, But again, and I don't want to 
I don't want to go over this too quickly. I don't want to see, I want us to understand that we're supposed to bear one another's burdens that we, you know, sometimes a friend needs a shoulder to cry on. Sometimes, sometimes somebody needs you just to, just to listen, just to hear them out because they're, they're going through trials or going through tribulations or going through heartaches. They're going through things that they don't understand. They're going through things that, that again, people, things have been done to them. You know, when you, when you think about Dr. Johannes J. Christian, a victim of, again, a teenager throwing a, a boulder over, eight-pound boulder over an overpass that went through the front windshield of his Cadillac and hit him in the face and knocked him into the back of the car and, and knocked out of his, his, both his eyes and literally tore off his face. I mean, knocked out all of his teeth and knocked off his nose. I mean, just it was just a little gaping hole left. And they, you know, but 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 through the miracles, the miracles of God, he was able to survive. And uh, and and now, now has an incredible, incredible ministry. And and we now call him the Forgiveness Doctor because he exemplifies forgiveness, perhaps more than anyone I've ever personally known or, or heard of or being around and so forth. And, and so that's an empower, a, a powerful thing because you've got to understand this. See, here's what I say, and you want to you write this down and understand this because, again, there, there, there are people that are victims and sometimes they don't, they don't understand it. They don't respond properly. So, so see, hurt people hurt people. I've said this before, hurt people who've not been healed will end up hurting other people. Hurt people, on the other hand, who've been healed will now be used to help and empower other people. So when hurt people haven't been healed, they hurt other people, and it's a pain pattern that gets passed on generation after generation after generation. And someone has to break the chain, and it needs to be done today. Because listen carefully, listen carefully, if you're not careful, you will go from being a victim to a victimizer. Listen carefully. You know, most people who've been victims or been victimized, if they respond improperly, if they hold on to bitterness, if they, if they, if they stay too long in that place of why me, what, you know, and then all of a sudden you, you, you start saying, well, 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 you know, why did this happen to me? Like as a six-year-old boy, as I told you my story so many times, was I was beaten and tarred and feathered and by a teenage gang and literally beaten and bloodied and battered and left out in the middle of a field. You know, that's, that's a crazy scenario situation. I'm just grateful somebody rushed me to the hospital, got me taken care of. But I'm saying this, so many of you are listening to my voice. You've got similar stories. You've got some of you have got worse stories. Some of you have, some don't. But 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 to you, your story is your story. It doesn't matter. It doesn't compare. And it's not about comparing stories. But what I'm saying, my friend, is this: I'm saying all of us, to some degree in life, we've been victims, and and you 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 have a choice. You you have a choice now, and that's what's so powerful is most people don't understand the power of choice that God has given them. And so as a victim, my friend, if you're not careful, if you, if you, if you go into that state of bitterness, if you go into that state of, uh, you know, why me and this, you can become a victimizer. In other words, my friend, the amazing thing about those who have survived, um, there's one thing to survive, you know, um, molestation and, and rape and incest and all these kind of things. Uh, but there's a difference between being a thriver because usually those who've been victimized, if they don't get the proper help, they end up becoming victimizers. And uh, as a matter of fact, they start thinking that the whole, you know, everybody, you know, I like what Jim Rohn said. He said, he said there's only like five or six really nasty people in the world. They just kind of move around a lot, right? <laughs> and what happens is, though, if you're a victim, watch this now, and you don't get the proper if you don't get the proper healing, if you if you don't go through the proper steps, what happens is, my friend, you get you become bitter and hardened, and if you don't release 
And if you don't have a spirit of forgiveness about you, if you don't have, and again, it's not for the, the people or that person, it's for you, your own. Somebody said having bitterness and resentment and anger is like drinking poison and hoping that someone else gets sick. It doesn't happen that way. See, bitterness does more harm to the vessel in which it's stored than the victim on whom it's poured. And I'm telling you, my friend, there are people that are, that are, are victims and, and, and because they didn't properly respond, they are now victimizers. And I'm telling you, my friend, and the, the chain has to be broken. It has to stop now. But the question is, are, are, have you been a victim? Okay, then are you now a victimizer? Because what happens if you get bitter, you get upset, you end up being, because what happens is you keep thinking on that thing over and over again. And, and the sad thing about it is the brain, if you keep thinking on something and rehearsing it over and over and over and over again, it becomes the most dominant thing in the brain. And now it's easier for the brain to go along those lines. And oftentimes people that were shocked at what happened to them now become even more shocked that they are now doing the similar things. Other people, they went from being victims to victimizers because they never went through the proper healing, my friend. They, they never went through the proper process. They, they didn't learn to mature properly. And Paul said, when I was a child, I, I, I spake as a child. I, I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish thing. I, I manned up. And here we say shark up. I, I, you know, we, 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 we got to we got to grow. We got to learn. We got to, we, 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 here's the most impactful thing. You, you don't have to listen. You don't have to remain a victim for the rest of your life. And there's so many people that are just victims for the rest of their life. And they've, they've kind of just settled in that this is, this is me because here's what happens when you become a victim and you start thinking, I mean, I, was, I remember as a child thinking, man, you know, something's wrong with me. It must be me. Right. And, uh, and when you start having that victim mentality, you, you literally start attracting people that are victimizers who are looking for victims and you become easy prey. As a matter of fact, you, you become like the, like the, the, um, oh, what was it called? The, uh, um, the cat that's, that, that, that somebody said that just, you know, the rocking chair would always get hit the cat's tail and, and rock all the, and, and literally the, the cat would just lay it down, right? It's like, like, it's like, here, just go ahead, get it over it. Go ahead, do it again. It, the victim mode, and sometimes people get like that, and sometimes people have been hurt in business, and they've been hurt, and guess what? And they just become victims, and they just, they just like, well, you know, it's always going to be like this, and everything now is a scam, and nothing's going to, nothing's going to work for me, and I'm not, so, so I'm telling you, my friend, you could be a victim if you're not careful, if you don't, and again, you can't stop sometimes being a victim. Sometimes it just happens, right? It's not, it's not of your choosing, but what happens is you get to choose what you do about that situation. And some people, without recognizing it, they choose to become victimizers because they don't know how to deal with it because they, 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 they've embraced the pain, they've rehearsed the pain, they've nursed the pain for so long without the proper steps of healing. And so, my friend, it's time for folks to understand and, and, and it's time to understand that you may have been victimized, but you don't have to be a victimizer and God can break that chain and you can change. But here's what's sad. There's a lot of people that don't understand that you're a volunteer victim. Ooh. By the way, let me just back up for a moment. God doesn't hold you accountable for others' actions. He only holds you accountable for your reactions. Let me say it again. God doesn't hold you accountable for your actions, for others' actions, rather. He only holds you accountable for your reactions. And so many times, because we've been done wrong by someone else, then we feel like because they did us wrong, we should say something wrong. We should do something wrong back. We, and now, my friend, we, we, we get ourselves in trouble with the very God who was wanting to bless us and trying to bless us. And now we're canceling out some of our blessings. Why? God, he, he never holds us accountable for other people's actions. It's only our reactions. We're not held accountable for somebody who curses us out, but we're accountable when we curse back. We're not held accountable for someone that does us wrong and drink. But when we do it back, my friend, with the, the, being being vicious, and that's what happens, my friend. 
it's, 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 a, it's a cycle that has to be broken, my friend, and even in your business. So sometimes, again, victims, they feel sorry for themselves and, and they haven't given themselves permission to move forward. See, what happened to you, by the way, does not have to define you. Release the perpetrator, forgive yourself, and if you keep thinking it was your fault and what if I didn't do this or what if I would have that and what if I, you, you're, listen, you've got to get up out of victim mode. So the volunteer is a person who freely offers to take part in an enterprise or undertake a task. The definition of a volunteer, again, is a person who freely offers to take part in the enterprise or undertake a task. So volunteers, by the way, feel the need to keep rehearsing and nursing and rehashing the same scenario over and over again. So here's what happens, and it's sad. They don't even realize it. They have become more comfortable and would prefer to deal with a pr problem that they're familiar with than a solution that they're not familiar with. In other words, they would rather deal with their familiar problem than their unfamiliar solution. And, and, and you, it's amazing people even do that with their health today. They, you know, some people have been victims of, you know, the fourth leading cause of death, by the way, is properly prescribed prescription drugs by doctors who now have malpractice insurance and you can't even sue whatever. Uh, but, but, but watch this now. And, and doctors, most of them are sincere and they meant well, but they, they went to schools and they were trained and taught things. And the what, who determined what they're taught? Well, it's the pharmaceutical industry. So they're only going to allow them to be taught things in accordance to what the pharmaceutical industry. So well-meaning, sincere doctors go and are trained, but now they're being trained to use all these drugs and all these side effects and everything else. And now people, my friend, their mind is so set that a, a doctor is like a little god when they don't realize a doctor should be a teacher that helps you to be responsible. And the word responsible means respond with ability where you now can take responsibility. And that's what I love about the website, 200diseases.com. 200diseases.com. You can go there and scroll down the left-hand side and see what kind of situations you have. And a doctor will give you some wisdom and insight when you can take responsibility, when you can respond with ability. You don't have to be in victim mode and you don't have to volunteer to keep falling for being victimized. The volunteers don't realize that you really, my friend, have the power of choice you, you, you don't, you, it's like the, the guy said the nail that was, that was <laughs> groaning and he said, what's that wrong? He said, well, he's on the nail. He said, well, why didn't he move? He said, well, it doesn't hurt bad enough. <laughs> right? He's like, he just laying there, he in pain, but he's not willing to get up and uh, make the move. And uh, I'm telling you, my friend, I'm telling you, there comes a time when, okay, yes, we understand you've been hurt. Yes, we understand things aren't easy, but it's time to to man up, it's time to shark up, it's time to understand that, okay, uh, yes, but you've got to go through the steps, my friend, and you've got to stop, get this now, see, see, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent, Eleanor Roosevelt said that, so powerful, let me say it again, no one can make you feel inferior without, you know, your consent, and people, there's one thing to be a victim, but there's another thing, when you now become a volunteer, and again, you just you just volunteer to be a victim. You volunteer to stay in that same scenario. You volunteer to keep going back into the same situations and over and over again because now you you, you have now become into the frame of mind where this is your lot in life and you just minds will go along with it. And without realizing it, my friend, whether out of apathy or out of blame, as you've heard, being lazy and making uh, excuses. I like to say blame, B-L-A-M-E, being lazy and manifesting excuses. See, see, life doesn't come with a remote control like the television. You've got to get up. Life has no remote control. You've you got to get up and change it all by yourself. you got to shark up. you got to break through. You got to, but I'm telling you, my friend, so many people, they don't understand it, and they stay in victim mode or they become victimizers or, or, or they become volunteer victims, my friend. And, 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 and that's kind of like what the same thing on the job scenario. And, and they, they, they understand, they, they've heard the principles that Jim Rohn talked about, profits are better than wages and having your own business and so forth. But, but they settled, listen, they, they just settled for, well, you know, whatever they give me, that's what I'm going to take. And by the way, 
Oh my goodness, you cannot settle, my friend. You have got to learn. <laughs> Listen, I, 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 I'd rather I'd rather choke on greatness than nibble on mediocrity. Oh, and by the way, the minute you settle for less than you deserve, you get even less than you settled for. Oh, say that again. I said the minute you settle for less than you deserve, you get even less than you settled for. It was a quote by Marine Dowd, D-O-W-D. The minute you settle for less than you deserve, you get even less than you settled for. And again, no, no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper, but the question is, have you allowed your own mind to become the weapon that's been formed against you that's keeping you from prospering? Oh, come on, somebody. And when you don't realize the power that you have, see, that's what I love about what I do is being able to wake folks up and help them to break through, my friend, to break through. You don't have to be a victim to break through. And you definitely don't want to be a volunteer, my friend. And I congratulate, I applaud those who been through hard times. The, the Tawana Williams, who, who were born without arms and could have accepted a government check for the rest of her life, but she said, no, sir, no, ma'am, not me. Oh, no, 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 no. The Myron Goldens, who had, had polio and, and uh, could have said, no, 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 no. Don't feel sorry for me. See, the problem is sometimes victims, they, they get so comfortable and they, and, they, and they like the people feeling sorry for them and they're not even aware of it. And so, and so if, they were, if they would stop being victims, if they would stop being volunteers of victims, then who would feel sorry for them? And they become so comfortable with that. And now they become dependent on other sympathy for them, my friend. It's time, listen, you know, it's okay for baby sucking on, 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 on mama's breast, you know, being, being breastfed as a baby. But when you're five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? When you're 10, when you're 25, when you're 35, listen, it's time, it's time to break away, my friend. And I'm telling you, there, there's a, there's, there's a, a line. And again, we, I, I want to have empathy and sympathy for those who hurt, but at the same time, my friend, it's time to grow up. It's time to break through. It's time to understand that the song gets old sometimes and it's keeping you stuck where you are. So are you a victim? Are, 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 have you allowed yourself to become a victimizer? Right, and now you're like, look, I'm, I'm, a, I'm gonna get over on everybody I can because they look, they did to me, blah, blah, blah. Or, or listen, or actually, are you volunteering to be a victim, and you're just like stuck, like Chuck in a pickup truck, my friend, and and you're like the car that's parked on the side of life. You know, dogs don't even bark at parked cars, right? Get moving. And so, so listen, it's time to become victorious, and you'll never become victorious until first, my friend, you you have to be valiant. You have to be a visionary. And the word valiant, by the way, just means brave and courageous, heroic, and visionary means seeing the unseen until it becomes seen. And so, so if you want to transition from being a victim, transition from being a volunteer victim, my friend, then, then you have to be valiant. You, you, you've got to have a vision. You've got to see things changing, my friend. You've got to take time and meditate, as the scripture says, day and night. You gotta you gotta start seeing yourself succeeding. You gotta see yourself breaking through. You gotta you gotta you gotta have some some courage, my friend. You can't just keep sitting back and giving in and oh taking the road less travel. See some I, I put it this way, sometimes it takes one person, one decision or one action to change your life forever. You are that person. You must decide. You must take action. It's your choice. You can change. By the way, especially through my breakthrough challenge, especially my advanced challenge, especially the books that I've written, your breakthrough is guaranteed, and how to build a big team. So you can change, you can, you can, you can grow, you can break through, you can shark up, my friend, you can man up. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. I, I don't need to be babied anymore. I don't need to be pampered anymore. No, 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 no. I got this. The pain and adversity serves as a catalyst that catapults some to break and others to break bad. That's becoming vindictive, and yet many others to break records. The great poem, Invictus, I kind of reworked it a little bit by the Invictus breakthrough. Out of the night that covers me, black as a pit from pole to pole, I honor the Lord who blessed me with my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. 
Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade. Yet the menace of the years finds me with faith and unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how changed with punishments the scroll. Joshua 1 8 made me the master of my fate. King Jesus made me the captain of my soul. Originally written by W.H. Henley and paraphrased by Dr. Breakthrough. And I'm telling you, my friend, it's time. You got to understand, my friend, there's so much unused potential and power that you have, the power of choice, the power of a free will. You can get up, my friend, like the man, the poor professor. He had a, he became a victim after a while. He's like, look, for 38 years I've been trying to get in. You know, when the water was troubled by the angel, the first one that got in was healed. And by the way, I said before, God doesn't need, uh, uh, he doesn't need doctors. He doesn't need products. He doesn't need herbs. He doesn't need any of that, my friend. He doesn't need a pool of Bethesda, but when he chooses to use the pool and the water's troubled, I'm going to be the first one to jump in and get my healing. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and if he's, going to, if he's, going to, he's given us products and minerals and things that we can use, my friend, to put in our body and nanocards that we can use. Come on, somebody. And hydration. I'm, you bet I jumped all in. Come on, somebody. But I'm saying this, my friend. I'm saying this. That, that man, after a while, he just, he just like, man, every time I try to get in, somebody else beats me in. And Jesus finally said, he didn't even realize that he had the power within himself all the time and didn't know it. And Jesus said, take up your bed, walk, get up. What, what, what do you want? He said, well, sir, I have, I have, he said, I have no man when the water is troubled. You don't need some man. you the man. But I have no man when the water is troubled. No, 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 no. You're looking at healing right in front of yourself. And you're one by, he's, he's like, look, get, just get up. Take up your bed and walk. And the man got up. Wait a minute. Without even getting in the pool. Uh-oh. Hello, somebody. The man didn't realize he had the power with Ephesians 3.20 under him that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. And there's un listen, there's untapped power, my friend, and that's why victims stay victims. There's untapped power. And that's why sometimes they become volunteer victims and, and the vindictive people actually train them to be volunteers. And our government will train you, my friend, and the thought police will try to keep you locked in. But I'm telling you, we're here to set you free. We're here to help you to break through. We're here to help you to shark up, my friend. No, it won't be easy. Listen, it won't be easy, my friend, but it's worth it. And listen, people getting stuck on the welfare roll for the rest of their lives and generation after generation. No, somebody's got to break the thing and say, no, I'm going to go get me a start my own business, my friend. And, and uh, it won't be easy, but I'm going to make it happen, my friend. That's what changed our lives. That's, my friend, what will change your life. And that, my friend, is what we're all about, my friend. I can tell you over and over again, many stories, my friend, of different people whose lives they were victims, my friend. They had been victimized. But instead of becoming victimizers, no, 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 no. Instead of being volunteer victims, no, 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 my friend. They expressed, they, they were valiant and, and, and they were visionaries and they saw their lives different. And guess what, my friend? They broke through and they became victorious. <laughs> and you can too, my friend. Well, my time is out. Oh, my goodness. But I'm I, I I got one more thought, and anyway, I have to go back over this because it's just you, you get you got some, you think you got it, but you really didn't get it, my friend. Even as I'm going through this, it's it's ministering, even speaking to me in some areas of my own life. But then viceroy, that's where we want to be. A viceroy, listen to this. <laughs> a viceroy is a ruler exercising authority in a colony on behalf of a sovereign. Oh, good gracious! <laughs> a viceroy is a ruler, or exercising authority, rather, in a colony on behalf of a sovereign. Mm. See, vice is a term derived from the Latin prefix meaning in the place of. So viceroy, vice in the place of, and the French word roy means king. <laughs> Revelation 1, 6, and that's made us kings and priests unto God his Father. To him be glory, dominion forever and ever. John 20, 21, then said Jesus unto them again, peace be unto you as my Father has sent me. Even so send I you. 
Luke 19, 10, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. He said, the same reason I came, I'm, I'm establishing some viceroys. I'm establishing some sharks. I'm establishing some ambassadors. Hey, come on, somebody. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 20, we beseech you in Christ said, be ye reconciled unto God. Ambassadors, excuse my friend, it's like it's a viceroy. God said, listen, I, I, I want to use you. I'm giving you dominion. No, 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 no victim. No, no, no. No, not a victimizer. No, 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 not a volunteer victim. No, no. God says, step up, shark up, break through. Have, be, be valiant. Have a vision of what I have for you, and I'm going to make you victorious. And not just victorious, I'm going to help you. I'm going to empower you. I'm going to enable you to be a viceroy. You are a ruler exercising authority in the colony on behalf of a sovereign of me. I don't know anything better than this. And I'm telling you, you're listening to somebody I've been to all. All the steps, my friend, all the steps. I'm telling you, you can break through because it's breakthrough time. Shark, shark. God bless you. Wow, shark, shark. <laughs> Woo, victim. Are you a victim? I'm telling you, are you a victor? And uh, what's the third one after breakthrough? Well, they can be vindictive, um, you know, if they're not, if, you know, so if you, if you don't properly respond from being a victim, you can be a victimizer, um, but but you can, and, and many people are volunteer victims, but wow. you've got to be valiant and be a visionary so you can then have victory, so then God can establish you as a viceroy. Oh, come on, Jesus. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Well, your victim days are over. <laughs> wow. But the volunteer wow. days, see, there's people that volunteers, they don't even know, they don't even know that God had given them power. It's like, it's like here Juneteenth, right? The folks here in Texas were still in, in slavery. They didn't, they didn't know about the Emancipation Proclamation. They didn't know they had been set free. They were still operating. They didn't even know it. And so that's why you should know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And that's why, again, Coach, I'm so grateful for those folks who just been we always say sometimes you need to call and other times the call needs you and people that are just faithfully getting on these calls, but, but even more putting other people on the calls because you just never know what somebody's going through. And just one word sometimes will trigger just one word will set somebody free. I got to stop. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to close the call out, but you know, when you were talking is scripturally what came to me was uh, Mephibosheth because he was mm. a victim and it wasn't really Come his on. fault. The baby, right. you know, he what, what he knew, and uh, and it it, it 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 so impressed him that he just was mentality of a dead dog. Man, went to a low place, and uh, so I think when you were when you were teaching, I said, "Wow!" And so somebody has to come and pull all on that and help him realize that you're not what you seem to be. You're not what happened to you, but today mm. this is who you are. I have to restore his whole image of himself. I, you know, I, I just thank God for you because many of us have been through some low times, and uh, we need to hear that because, you know, something's not our fault. You know, you know it's a, I could have made it if he hadn't done this. If she hadn't done that, I'd been, oh, look where I would have been, you know, and so forth. And then how do we get back from that? So that was a powerful teaching, powerful recording, man. Thank you for your heart and your teaching and your training that you give us out of your heart. We love you, man. 